Australia has taken decisive steps to keep its Collins-class submarine fleet operating at peak capability well into the next decade, securing two major contract extensions with leading defence firms. Announced on August 8, 2025, these agreements ensure that both sonar and periscope systems will remain state-of-the-art until the planned arrival of nuclear-powered successors under the AUKUS Pact. Thales Australia has been awarded a five-year deal worth US$178 million US dollars to maintain and upgrade the Collins-class sophisticated sonar systems. In parallel, BAE Systems Australia will receive US$89 million US dollars over the same period to deliver complete in-service support for the fleet's periscope systems. Together, these contracts form a central pillar of Australia's naval shipbuilding and sustainment plan, preserving sovereign expertise and ensuring uninterrupted operational readiness. Under its agreement, BAE Systems will provide end-to-end -end maintenance, engineering, logistics, and program oversight for the 16 periscope systems deployed across six submarines. This work will be carried out at the company's facilities in South Australia's Mawson Lakes and at HMAS Stirling in Western Australia. Thales, meanwhile, will sustain the Scylla Sonar Suite, an advanced mix of active and passive sonar arrays, inboard signal processing units, and domestically designed towed arrays. The scope covers scheduled servicing, operational support, upgrades, obsolescence management, and manufacturing or repair of key components. The Collins class remains one of the world's most capable diesel-electric submarine designs. With a displacement of roughly 3,400 tons and a length of nearly 78 meters, these vessels are powered by three Hedemera V18 diesel engines connected to a Jumont Schneider electric motor, giving them a submerged top speed of around 20 knots. They can travel over 11,000 nautical miles at 10 knots on the surface and remain at sea for up to 70 days without resupply, perfect for Australia's vast maritime zone. Advanced stealth measures, such as anechoic coatings and vibration-isolated machinery, make them difficult to detect in both shallow and deep waters. Each submarine is armed with six 533mm torpedo tubes capable of launching up to 22 weapons. Their primary loadout includes MK-48 Mod 7 Bass heavyweight torpedoes with advanced sonar homing and robust countermeasure resistance, as well as UGM-84C sub-arpoon missiles for striking surface targets at over 120 kilometers. They can also lay up to 44C mines, offering a flexible toolkit for anti-submarine warfare, sea denial, covert surveillance, and special operations. While the Collins class excels at stealthy patrols in regional waters, its eventual replacement with nuclear-powered submarines under AUKUS will mark a leap in endurance, speed, and payload. Nuclear boats will be able to stay submerged for months, travel virtually unlimited distances, and carry more advanced weaponry. However, these future assets are not expected to enter service until the early 2030s, and production delays in the UK or US could push the timeline further. In that case, Australia may need to explore interim solutions to avoid a gap in its undersea capabilities. In the meantime, the upgraded Collins class remains vital to countering growing naval activity in the Indo-Pacific. Regional tensions, particularly China's expanding maritime presence, have reinforced the importance of a strong and stealthy submarine fleet. By securing these contracts, Australia ensures that its undersea forces remain among the most capable conventional submarines in service, while also sustaining a critical domestic defence industry that supports high-skilled jobs in key regions. This investment not only safeguards the Navy's ability to deter threats but also underscores Canberra's determination to remain a sovereign and capable maritime power, ready to operate decisively in contested waters until the nuclear era of its submarine fleet begins.